Hi, this video is a part of deep learning with TensorFlow playlist. In this playlist, I quickly explain the logic and implementation of deep learning algorithms and applications using TensorFlow. Note that I do not code along, rather I make use of pen for explaining the tricky parts of code so that you people can read the notebooks and Python file files and re-implement them yourself. Code files for each of the video will be given in the description. So I'm expecting my audience to have good understanding of deep learning and they just need little hints for implementation of deep learning algorithms using TensorFlow. In this video, I'll be talking about transfer learning based image classification. In transfer learning, we are making use of already pre-trained model. Let's understand this idea of what is transfer learning and how to code it in Python using whiteboard and the notebook. Okay, so we are talking about Inception v3, transfer learning based image classification. In going into detail of Inception v3 transfer learning, this concept of transfer learning, let's re review what we know about neural networks. We have input layers, we have hidden layers, we have output layer. All of these layers are densely connected and each previous layer is linearly combined with the weights of this layer, this current layer, uh, and this weighted combination is outputted after applying the activation function and this activation function application uh, gives uh, output. This output is an input for this next layer and the same thing happens in all of the layers. So this is what we call basically a feed forward uh, or forward propagation. Okay, once done this forward propagation, we calculate the error. After calculating this error, we do the back propagation, find out the gradients, uh, and adjust the weights accordingly. So this whole process happens in neural network. These layers are densely connected. For that reason, these layers are also called uh, dense layers. Okay, then what happens is, then let's talk about convolutional neural network. The problem with simple dense neural network is that if, if they are used for images, then each image pixel will be considered as a single feature and the combination and the relationship of different pixels together, different pixels combination together will be lost. So this information will be lost. For that reason, convolutional neural networks came uh, having convolutional layer and pooling layer mainly, uh, which makes use of these uh, neighboring, uh, neighboring uh, pixels. Uh, and it makes sense and it is more intuitive. So uh, in recent years, there are less, there are a lot of modern architectures basically developed or some of them are like ResNet 50, Inception v3, and they all are trained on very large data sets. Uh, we have already explained uh, and talked about ResNet 50, uh, where we have implemented this ResNet 50 from scratch. Uh, you can you can look at it uh, in the playlist. Uh, but in this Inception v3, this is even more complex this, uh, than this ResNet 50. What happens basically, uh, what the idea is that these complex models, once trained on very large data set, these models internally captured the representation useful representations if you know about convolutional neural networks in detail then then you might know that in convolutional neural network the initial layers basically capture the edges and as we, as we move forward in layers we capture more and more complex uh, features uh, so in a way uh, if we uh, if, if if these models are trained on on, on these uh, on these uh, large data sets then the weights of these internal layers inner layers will contain important information that we can use in case we don't have that much of a large data set to to uh, train our model uh, from complete start okay then what we do is then we will explain this transfer learning but before that lastly i want to explain this tensorflow implementation of these neural networks so what happens is that we have these input layers we have con layer suppose in convolutional layer we have, we have pooling layer and dense layer then what happens is that we tell we, we we create this kind of a graph or we create this kind of a uh, architecture so we define this architecture and after defining the architecture we tell about the error metric and optimization function and all of the details of hyperparameters uh, then this tensorflow does this automatic differentiation and weight adjustment for us so we don't need to know any mathematics which is which is is not what I am encouraging, but uh, TensorFlow, the beauty of TensorFlow is that uh, it does all the things by itself. However, the knowledge of mathematics, of course, of course, helps. Okay, one more thing uh, that uh, in defining uh, this, this graph, uh, one way is using the sequential a API, and another way is this functional API. In sequential API, the idea is that uh, we, uh, we add layers one above the other. So it's input, then conf, then pooling, then another conf, then pooling, so this is the idea. The problem with that is we cannot we cannot define input uh, for each of the layer, and the input is inferred from the previous layer. So whatever the output of this previous layer is, that output will be given uh, as an input to this con layer, uh, and the output of this con layer will be given as an input to the pooling layer, and then the output of pooling layer will be given as an input to this con next con layer. In functional API, we have this control. Uh, it is kind of a bit tricky than sequential API, but it's better to use this functional API of TensorFlow.Keras. Okay, so uh, how it works is uh, the same graph instead of writing in sequence. Uh, instead of writing this whole thing in sequence, we could just say that output is equal to conf input. So we take input, 
that input is is represented in this bracket form after this con uh, layer uh, definition this con layer function definition so this is con layer uh, after that we have this input layer as an input uh, the output of this uh, this 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 con layer will be stored in this out then in the next stage we want to apply this pooling function but the input to the pooling function will again be this output the out this time this output is basically the output of convolution and we store this output again in the variable output so in the next stage what we will do is we will again apply this con op operation but this time the out variable is actually representing the output of this pooling layer so in this way we move forward so it is not very much different than sequential api but we have a bit of more uh, more control and we will be using this uh, functional api okay now in transfer learning what we do is uh, we give an input to the pre-trained model and in pre-trained model there are different layers and we choose any layer that uh, the depth of layer or any name of layer that we want to uh, use uh, uh, as an output so that trained uh, that layer that we chose we will we will uh, make use of pre-trained model up to that layer and our input image will be given uh, to that pre-trained model and in feed forward fashion this input will be uh, this input will be moved from one layer to another to another to another to another until this layer which we have already defined uh, where we want to cut this pre-trained model or where we want to uh, uh, take an output so we take the output of this pre-trained model so once we have taken this output so then this output will be input to our own neural network our own small neural network now this input is much better than this previous input why because this previous input has gone through this pre-trained model and has learned a lot of representation uh, in the form of this output model okay uh, so this is the thing uh, we have to just load this uh, this pre-trained model and then apply it let's jump to the notebook and understand this idea so we are loading all the necessary libraries and then what we are doing here is uh, we are just loading the data set of cats and dogs we are understanding the data that is uh, inside the directory uh, we are not actually uh, loading it in ram because it will it will consume a lot of memory instead we will be generating images uh, directly from the memory uh, from the directory uh, and we will not be storing it in ram uh, this this is also the important functionality that tensorflow uh, trans tensorflow allows us uh, by using uh, the generator class or generator i'll, I'll, be, I'll be explaining that uh, in the next uh, in the next cell so let's visualize the input data we have cats high resolution images of cats and dogs then we load inception v3 model that we have that that is already downloaded okay so this inception v3 model is taking input as 150 153 images 150 150 comma 3 dimension images okay once we have that uh, include top means we don't want the final layer uh, and uh, then uh, we are saying that there are uh, no weights yet after loading this train model then we load the weight afterwards uh, this uh, weights are also downloaded uh, i have also downloaded the, these weights and you can find it uh, in any in any article i mean there are a lot of uh, places where you could you, you could find these weights you can just google it you'll find these weights and these preload model a preloaded model uh, then what we will do is we will we will make the layers of this pre-trained model um, pre-trained model we will freeze the layers of this pre-trained model uh, so that we don't want to uh, train those 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 layers again so i mean it is possible if we have large amount of data set if we had large amount of data set then we just don't only learn our own neural network but also adjust the weights of this pre-trained model so in a way this pre-trained model in that sense will be just working as a as a uh, as a head start so we have uh, we have uh, we have uh, taken a very good representation of very raw input and then we adjust and tune this pre-trained model but in our case we don't want to tune it uh, we just want to uh, we just don't want to train these layers so we freeze them freeze all of the layers we look at the summary and this summary if you look at it this is a very large and very very uh, very deep model uh, you can just have a look at it okay after that then we customize inception v3 for our own need how do we do that uh, we first of all choose the layer we we chose uh, this mixed seven layer where we don't we, where we want to stop where we want to get out from this pre-trained model as i have already explained so this blue line is a layer that we selected uh, this layer could be in the very initial stages if it is in the very initial stages then it means uh, we are just learning basic uh, features or what we say basic uh, edges and when we go to the deep, uh, when we when we leave uh, this pre-trained model uh, in more and more depth, it means we are actually capturing more and more complex kind of 
uh, features. So choosing where we want to get out of this pre-trained model is also important. So it depends on, on the pre-trained model. If the pre-trained model was trained on same kind of data set that we are using, then it's okay to go deeper and deeper. But if it, if, if, if it was completely trained on completely different data set, then it's much better to use only few of the layers and get out early uh, from this pre-trained model because uh, the basic edges will uh, will work for us uh, while going uh, deeper and deeper will will, will really uh, create nice nice uh, nice for, for for later training of our own model okay now after extracting out this this mixed seven layer of this pre-trained model uh, we just flatten it and we uh, connect this a fully connected dense layer having 1024 units then we apply this dropout and then we apply the single dense layer uh, so this is like an output layer and we are doing single class classifications so we apply we apply sigmoid classifier uh, sigmoid activation function here i'm just uh, i'm just defining the model uh, so this is how we define the model in functional api uh, where we are having input uh, from coming from pre-trained model dot input and uh, the output is actually the output here x which is coming out of this dense layer having one unit okay we compile the model compile the model uh, with optimizer loss and metric and then this is the important part this is really effective part where we are we are using this image data generator class this image data generator class is what what it will it what it will do is it will allow us to use uh, the images stored in our directly uh, or like uh, the direct the stored in our directory so we will directly use the images stored in our directory there is no need to preload these images in the ram furthermore on the fly these images will be augmented uh, rotated and scaled so this will uh, this will save a lot of computation and memory okay once we do that then we uh, we uh, we do it for training data and for testing data then we fit the model using fit generator function and not fit function because we are using this generator class so train generator uh, so after that we are doing it just for two epochs because it is really costly you can you can run it for more epochs and you can just uh, work you can just uh, play with the hyperparameters then what we will do is uh, we evaluate the model and then we finally visualize the models so i have already talked uh, talked about this visualization in the first video of this playlist and i will also be talking in detail about this visualization but the main idea is that we want to find out uh, the uh, the convolutions uh, that what part of a picture the convolution is actually learning in each layer so we will store each layer output so here we want to see for the five layers so we store the output for five layers of the model first five layers of the model then what we do is we create a model where we want to give it a model input but this time we don't want the only the final output but we want the output for each of the layer once we have that then what we do is given this data what we do is uh, we predict the input image using this visualization model after prediction what we will be having is the output for each of the layer okay once we have the output for each of the layer uh, and the layer names then what we will do is then we will choose uh, that which convolution do we want to visualize in each of the layer suppose we want to visualize this first convolution and in this first layer activations so this is this this is how it looks and uh, if i have to do it for all of the convolutions then this is how it looks it might not make much sense to you now uh, but uh, this usually uh, does not make sense but it is really helpful tool to understand and interpret the results and i'll be making a complete video on that which is what we call a cl gradient classification activation maps i hope so you understood this transfer learning concept in tensorflow